Oh, well, it's um, Wednesday, hump day. And I'm walking down to the beach for the first time since I've come back from Brisbane. So uh, it's been some time. Uh, over two weeks. So um, looking forward to... Uh, to see whether any progress has been made on um, on the extension of the bike track so uh, that'll be right down the other end there's the old bus which I've avoided for a few weeks actually I don't think I've actually have I caught it yeah I must have yeah I have caught it once since I've been back but uh, I'm not using it much that's for sure but today my uh, house feels like a home because it is saturated with bottles of gin. That's my definition of a proper home. It is a house with plenty of excess gin. And now I've achieved that. It took six days to come up from uh, Brisbane, but uh, they're all in my uh, pantry now. And awaiting consumption. So... I'm looking forward to it. The only problem, of course, is because of all these supply chain problems, uh, if I want to get the generic uh, tonic water, which is exactly the same as the Sweeps, I've tried both, and I think they're, they're, I'm sure they come from the same factory. As a matter of fact, the Sweeps bottle is slightly smaller than the generic one. I think it's 1.25 litres. The generic Coles one, and the same with Woolworths, they use exactly the same dimensions. Uh, as opposed to about 1.1 litres for the um, for the one they substitute uh, if they don't have the uh, generic one. Although they, I've got an order in for tomorrow for uh, Coles for another delivery and they just said they had no tonic water. So that either means that they don't have tonic water, even the Sweeps variety, which they normally would substitute for the... Uh, the generic one or they basically uh, are not prepared to pay uh, to give me a premium what's supposedly a premium tonic water at the same price as the generic one so I'm not sure what the case is there they're, look they're overall they're pretty fair in general about uh, what they do with the pricing and what have you um, I've I only got half as the quantity of, of dates last time from a name brand as opposed to the generic one. Uh, their guidelines say they should offer me the same quantity at the same price. So I got diddled on that, but then again they gave me a crap load more of uh, spinach than I'd ordered because obviously they didn't have the smaller packs. So again, you know, they're, they're reasonably fair and I couldn't be bothered complaining because if you take it all in together, I'm, I'm pretty well on the same position so it's not worth complaining and and you know they are under strain it's difficult to fulfill those orders at the moment and you get just to be grateful that can still get free deliveries so uh, I mean obviously they'd like to sell more so uh, it's a genuine supply constraint unfortunately so uh, Yeah, things are... I've, I've been going crazy trying to get uh, uh, travel insurance organised because the people I used to use for travel insurance overseas, fast cover, they won't even cover you for um, Vietnam. So I, they wouldn't even cover me for, for uh, Thailand. I put the details in just to see what would happen. And um, I think it's due to the fact that Smart Traveller uh, advises not to go to to Vietnam unless you have to and some some insurance companies uh, well not well quite a few insurance companies won't cover you under those circumstances they use as an out so uh, it makes life really difficult other ones will only count you out totally if there's actually a, a travel advisory just saying just don't travel to say Vietnam but they're not saying that they're just saying you should reconsider your decision to travel. So it's the second highest alert. Personally, I think it's absurd because they've got a high vaccination rate over there. Sure, they've got a lot of COVID cases, but so have we for that matter. So, yeah, I just think it's just ridiculous. 
and the people are doing well out of this are the people doing the COVID testing. Although I've got to say that the, um, I think it's at Sonic, uh, I might be wrong here, I can't remember the name of the, the clinic that's actually at Sydney Airport, but they're not, they're not overcharging really, they're, uh, if you want to get a, uh, a rapid antigen test, I think it's, uh, it's around 50 bucks, 50, 60 bucks, 60 bucks probably, yeah, I think it is. Um, and that gives you a proper report you can use so you can board the plane. For a full, full PCR test, it's only 20 bucks extra. Yeah, so the cost of the actual uh, tests in Australia, at least in the airport, is actually quite reasonable. So that's, that's good, but it's at the international terminal in Sydney. Uh, compared to what, what I've read about, what people are getting charged in, say, the UK and the US for the same sort of tests, it's horrendous. If I go locally here, I think I think it is Sonic is the local uh, mob. I can't remember the name of the one in the airport, but the um, they're going to charge about 145 bucks. So that's substantially more than you're going to be charged at the airport. So the airport's doing a pretty good deal there. And I, and for for Vietnam, I also have to do a a, a travel a, a health report that you need to fill in online before you can actually board the plane as well. So, uh, but I can't do that until I've actually had the test done because they're going to ask me uh, for the for details of that test. I need to put them through. So uh, I can't do the uh, get the health form organised until I've had the test. So. Hopefully the, the morning flight, this is the problem of living in Cairns, I have to get a connecting flight. And um, so if it's on time, uh, it should be landing in uh, Sydney at about 10.30 in the morning. And, um, and, the, and the actual flight to Saigon is uh, after 3 in the afternoon. So that's plenty of, of buffer time, just in case there's stuff ups. <coughs> So it shouldn't really be an issue because there's a number of flights coming out of Cairns unless it's inclement weather or something. But um, the worst case scenario is I might have to bump me on a later flight if I can't get on the one I've actually purchased. But these are all hassles that can happen when you're travelling and it's, uh, it makes it a bit of a stressful experience. But... Uh, like I say, I'm down here for the first time in weeks, about three weeks really. It is about three and a half weeks I'm, since I've been down here. That's pretty slack. It is nice to go down to the beach. Now, oh, I guess you take me, yeah, do, do it properly. I'll take my, uh, my trusty old sandals that are getting long in the tooth. That I might get repaired in Saigon actually. The, the bottom bit, you see, there's a hole there. And uh, that's the sort of repair job that these guys on street corners in District 1 can fix up for, I don't know, 100,000 dong maybe. So is it probably about, equivalent of about five bucks or so? Five to six dollars. So I'll, um, they'll put a new um, uh, threads on the bottom of the. Uh, of the uh, of the sandals because I mean the leather tops are still okay they might have a bit more light in them so I've got another pair that's got a split down the, uh, the bottom of the, the soles slightly different design and I'll guess even get those repaired as well they usually take about 24 hours 48 hours to do the job and uh, yeah I've never had a problem with them in the past they're quite good Probably the, the best thing to do is to take a photo of your shoes just so you can definitely identify them because with the language barrier, you're not going to be able to give you a name or anything, so uh, it's all got to be visual. And of course, you, you, you live in faith of the fact that they're gonna, not going to do a runner on you and they are going to return to that corner with the repaired shoes. So. But look, I don't think it's an issue generally. It works. I know locals, I've seen local expats use it too, so. But that's the beauty of somewhere like Vietnam, it's the labour costs are so low that you can afford to have something like that done.
not here in Oz. There's plenty of beach today. It's a quite it's a beautiful day. The weather's been superb the last few weeks. We haven't had any rain. It's just a bit of a wisp of a breeze, but it's quite refreshing. So. Um, very nice, very nice. And now looking down towards um, Clifton Beach there. I actually feel a bit guilty because I did give um, Clifton Beach uh, Liquor Land a bit of a basting on Google. I gave them one out of five because the guy just didn't want to help me at all with the, you know, when I asked if he could just tell me if you get any more um, beef eater or gin in. He just refused to do anything. He said, ring. And then, then I find out later that their phone's continually engaged at, uh, at the Clifton Beach Liquor Land. So, yeah, they didn't really deserve much kudos. I noticed someone else put a post, a low score posting in for them as well about rudeness of the staff. So maybe there is an issue there. Um, mind you, people have complained about the Koala Beach uh, Liquor Land and I haven't had any issues with them. Uh, the woman that runs the manager, she's not the friendliest person on earth, but she's never done anything particularly bad. And certainly her staff are quite good. I mean, they, they went out of their way to help me out when I, one in particular, when I, uh, when I, I discovered they, they don't even stock the beef either. This was quite a few months back. Because uh, they're just phasing it out from liquor land in succession. It's amazing I was able to get five uh, bottles of this stuff. I, I don't know what the limit would have been, but it was a six, a box with six slots that they brought, and they just put some packing in the, the six slot, and uh, they're all intact. There's no no breakage, and it was delivered to my door by Australia Post. So I'm very happy. Good service, and I actually did because I felt guilty about doing that Google review about Clifton Beach. I I've, I've got no issues at all with the people, I, I presume, are based in, in Brisbane for Liquor Land. And I, I sent them a, a message saying I was very happy with the service and what have you. And they actually wrote a, uh, a reasonable size reply saying they're very uh, thank, uh, thanking me for uh, giving them positive feedback. Because everybody pays out on customer service, but rarely do they actually give a positive response. And they said they'd pass it on to their manager because they were very happy. So. So I felt a bit better about that because I mean, not, I've got nothing against Liquor Land as, as, as an organisation. I think they're much better value than BWS, which is the Woolworths uh, uh, liquor chain. But um, you know, just yeah, I don't want to. I, I don't think it's it's good to just some people just super negative about everything. If you look up productreview.com, you'll get so much negative feedback about every insurance company because I mean, insurance companies are the whipping boys of most people. Especially if you've had a bad claim experience. I've never had that, to be honest with you. I've, I've always done okay with, with insurance companies. Uh, the last claim I got was a bit the biggest one I've ever had, and it did take a while. I made it. They didn't make it the most streamlined process. It would have taken three to four months for me to get the money, but uh, it was 18 grand uh, for a, a major operation I had in, um, in Vietnam. So uh, I got all the money back. So, uh, even though it took a while, it wasn't like I was, I was scraping for a dollar or whatever. It, it uh, might have lost a bit of interest on the money, not the facts much of these days. But yeah, really, overall, not bad, not bad at all. So, and one of the, one, and the other irony is that probably the couple of the best jobs I've had are working for insurance companies in my my uh, fragmented work career. Um, I found them to be very good employers. So, um, yeah, it's uh, a very, yeah, I've got, I've, I've got no issues myself with insurance companies. I've never tried to deal with them. I know some people do try to deal with them. I had a, I had a fire. That's so I did actually claim uh, years ago we uh, had a house with my ex in, um, in Thornbury. Thornbury? I think it's in Thornbury. Um, and, um, oh, Northcote. I was in Northcote. And um, and the, we, I, uh, there was a fire in the back, and it was my fault. Although I'd, I'd put the cover on the the incinerator, but uh, the flame it just flamed up when a friend turned up. It was a bad time. It's just unlucky that 
a friend turned up and went down and had a few drinks at the pub and the bloody thing it was bedlam after that so uh, the back fence was burnt and a bit of the shed and um, I got it all repaired and it's actually in better nick after the uh, insurance claim and beforehand so it was uh, an improvement in effect so yeah it just depends but look to, having said that I'll say the darkest example of um, of insurance companies and this is sort of like the um, uh, what you find with the um, try to look at the author and we go like lots of all this stuff on um, on insurance um, John Grisham might be John Grisham I'm thinking of a anyway they I rang up uh, the the insurance company just doing a general inquiry asking about whether uh, I would be covered for the claim that I was going to make and they put me through to someone who just said no just said straight out no you, you won't qualify they're trying to just put me off putting in a, a, a claim and this is for the same claim I got totally paid out for with the same company but they had people there employed just to say no which I think is totally immoral uh, but it's obviously a business decision they've made it's obviously saved them money and there would be a lot of people who may not have the um, the fortitude to carry on with that claim and I've got a couple of friends who are exactly that position I think they wouldn't have done that but I was I followed through with it and I actually got the money so there's something to be learned from that I think well it appears as if the old uh, dreaded uh, jellyfish is still around which is a shame. Bloody stingers. There's some people out there on the beach, so I hadn't heard about anybody else going to hospital recent times, so I'm presuming it isn't as bad as it was a few months ago, but uh, there's a few people here today, but I um, can't see any great evidence of the uh, bike trip being over here. I'll have a closer look. I can't see any um, any sign of construction taking place, which is a bit disappointing because I, I thought it should have started by now. But uh, we'll get a closer look. You know, we'll look up here. Could be wrong. I mean, I'm hopeless with eyesight. So let's have a look. And that's the toilet block over there. Yeah. I would have presumed it'd be over here where they'd There's no signs, there's no, nothing. No signs of any action happening. Uh, No, absolutely no construction. God, when are they going to start this? Uh, yeah, let's just go over here and have a look. I don't, I can't see any evidence of any new construction regarding a bike path. So, not looking good. Please uh, consider subscribing to my channel if you think there's anything there of, uh, of use to you or entertainment or whatever. And uh, either give, do that or give me a thumbs up or, or if you're feeling really energetic, do both. That'd be great.